I will demonstrate for you how to make a little addition game. Let's take a look at what we will be creating. You can see I have my code here and I have four variables for this particular program. I have one variable called num1 that will hold the first number. I have a second variable called num2 that will hold the second number. I have a variable called num3 that will add those two numbers together. And then I have a fourth variable that holds the user's answer. For this particular program, we are using variables and we're also using a conditional statement that will check to see if the user answer, the user's answer rather, is correct. If it's correct, it will say, yes, that's correct. If it's not, it will tell the user that their answer is incorrect and give them the correct answer. Let's run the program. So I click the green flag. It says, what is the sum of these two numbers? The two numbers are listed here. I will select or type in three, hit the check mark, and it says, yes, that's correct. Let's try it again, but we'll answer it wrong. What is the sum of these two numbers? So three plus three would be six. I will answer five on purpose. I will then click the check mark. It says, no, sorry, that's incorrect. The correct answer is six. So let's go ahead and make this now. I'm going to select file and then new to start a new program. I'm going to change my sprite to the owl. So in the bottom right, we can select choose a sprite. Scroll down to the owl. The sprites are in alphabetical order. There's my owl. I'm going to delete my cat sprite by clicking on it and then selecting the X. So let's make our variables now. Under variables, select make a variable. We'll call the first one num1, select OK. Make a variable again. We'll call the second one num2 and then select OK. Under variables, select make a variable again. Call the third variable sum, select OK. Let's make one more variable. So under variables, make a variable and call this user answer. Sometimes you might not know all of the variables that you will be using, especially when you're first starting out with programming. So you can always add these later. So I've got a variable called user answer now and I select a okay. So I'm ready to add my code now. Under events, we'll grab that when the green flag is clicked block. Notice I'm making my code a little bit bigger so you can see it by clicking on this plus. I then I'm going to make each of my variables equal to a random number. So under variables, I will select the set block and place it beneath the green flag. In the pull down menu, I'm going to select num1. I'm going to make num1 equal to a random number between zero and 10. Under operators, I will take the pick random block and snap it in replace of the zero. I will then change it so it goes from zero to 10. And you can use different numbers if you'd like to. I'm then going to do the same for my second variable. So under variables, I will select the set block, place it beneath the previous block in the pull down menu. I will change it to num2. Under operators, I will get that pick random block, change it from zero to 10. To 10. And again, you can change the range to whatever you'd like. I'm then ready to add those two numbers together to find out what the answer would be. So under variables, I will get the set block, pull down menu, select sum. I then need an operator to add those two variables together, the values of those variables rather. So under operators, the sum block or the addition block is the first one. I will snap that into place, go into my variables, select the num1 block, snap that into the first part, num2, snap that into the second part. So sum will be equal to num1 plus num2. Now we can add our conditional statement, um, but first we actually wanna ask the user what they think the answer is to these two numbers. So let's just do a couple things here to make it a little clearer to the user what they're going to be, you know, which two numbers they're going to be adding. So I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to get rid of the word, the variable sum and the user answer on my stage here. So under variables, I'm going to uncheck sum and uncheck user answer. 
I'm then going to move number one down here and num two down here. And just to make it look a little nicer, I'm going to right click on there and I'm gonna change it to a large readout. So only the two numbers will be seen. Now I will ask the user what the sum of these two numbers is. Under sensing, I will select the ask block, snap it into place. And because we're going to be using this answer block here, I'm going to move it over here for now. Instead of what's your name, I'm going to type in what's the sum of these two numbers. Under variables, select the set block. In the pull down menu, change it to user answer. I can move my answer block inside there. So now when the owl says what's the sum of these two numbers, it will store whatever answer the user typed in into the variable called user answer. We can do our conditional statement now. So under control, select the if then else block, if then else snap that into place. I'm going to check if the user's answer is equal to the variable value of sum. In order to do that, I need a comparison operator. So select operators and we need the equal comparison operator. I will snap that into place. Then I will go to my variables, take the sum variable, place it in the first one and the user answer variable can be placed in the second part of the comparison operator. The order of those doesn't matter because it's an equal operator. It's, com it's comparing these two values. So if the sum is equal to the user's answer, or if the user's answer is equal to sum, then we can say that's correct. So under looks, I will grab the speech bubble, the first one, Instead of hello, I will say that's correct. I need another one. So if it's not correct, else means otherwise, that means we know it's incorrect. So we could say that's incorrect. I'm also going to change it from two seconds to three, just so it stays up on the screen a little bit longer and we have time to read it. So let's run our program and see what happens. When I click the green flag, it says, what's the sum of these two number? Notice I have a little error there, so I'm gonna fix that. Instead of number, I wanna say numbers. I'll just run it again. Okay, what's the sum of these two numbers? It's corrected now. The two numbers, which have been randomly selected, are one and seven. So we know that the answer is eight. I can click on the check mark and it says that's correct. So let's make sure it works testing out our program by answering a number that is incorrect. Our two new numbers are four and four. They happen to be the same number. I'm going to answer that the solution would be, or the sum would be five. I'll click on the check mark and it says that's incorrect. You might also want to add additional information to the user by saying that's incorrect and then tell them what the correct answer is because each time they run the green flag or click the green flag again, it will generate two new numbers. So instead of just that's correct, we want to go to operators and select the join block here. So we are going to join or concatenate two um, sets of texts or two things together here. So instead of Apple, I will say that's incorrect. The correct answer is, and then I'm going to put a colon in a space. Without the space, the variable value will be right up against the previous character. Under variables, I can look for my sum block and snap that into place. So let's run it now. So the answer would be 15, but I'm going to answer it incorrectly to test our program out. So that's incorrect, the correct answer is 15. So now our program works.